Welcome to this video in the Life on Earth series. This video is going to be looking at the dot point, identify the relationship between the conditions on early Earth and the origin of organic molecules. So before we begin, we're going to have a look at what we mean by the term early Earth. So the Earth is believed to be approximately 4.5 billion years old. So 4.5 billion years ago, the Earth was obviously very different to what we know it to be today. So 4.5 billion years ago, the sun was only at about 70% of its current strength. The Earth was spinning much faster with the day only being about 18 hours instead of the 24 that we're now used to. And there was no free oxygen in the atmosphere. So the fact that there was no free oxygen in the atmosphere led to a whole heap of differences as well. So there was no, uh, there was no ozone layer. So we had no protection from the ultraviolet light from the sun or the ultraviolet radiation, sorry. And there was a greater amount of carbon dioxide, so the air was quite a bit denser. It is believed that Earth transformed from a gaseous cloud into a solid body during the formation of the planets. And what they believe happened is that the heavier elements sunk to become the Earth's core, so things like iron and nickel, while the lighter elements rose and formed the Earth's crust. The elements that sunk and became the core of the earth remained in a molten state due to the intense heat and pressure that was present. So when we look at the word molten, it means that it's sort of a semi-liquid. So it doesn't um, become hard, but it also doesn't flow uh, like normal liquid, but it's still able to move. Convection currents have caused this molten material to rise and fall over time and as a result produce volcanoes. So convection currents, we, uh, we can see down in this image at the bottom here, mean that when the liquid is heated, the liquid rises to the surface of the earth. Obviously, the surface is a lot cooler the further away you get from the core, so it becomes heavier and falls back down again. And we have this constant circular motion of that molten mantle. So when uh, this molten material passes through the surface of the earth, we have a volcano. So volcanoes not only bring solid material to the surface, but also the gases that are trapped within these materials. And it is these gases that were released from volcanoes that formed the early atmosphere. So this image here shows an artist's representation of what they believe the early earth may have looked like. Okay, so as you can see, it's quite red and the atmosphere is quite dense. Uh, there's no real, well, there's no life, there's movement of water, but that's pretty much it. And the gases that would have been expelled from these volcanoes and formed the early atmosphere would have included hydrogen gas, methane gas, carbon dioxide, water in the form of water vapour, ammonia and nitrogen. So the Earth's early atmosphere is what we call anoxic. So it means that it had no free oxygen. And as a result, there was no ozone layer. So as I said before, the Earth's surface was exposed to ultraviolet radiation. Because of this, the Earth's temperature was extremely high, much greater than 1,000 degrees Celsius on the surface, and obviously meant that, uh, you know, that UV radiation was bombarding the surface of the Earth. So obviously there was absolutely no way that living organisms could have survived at that time. Most of the hydrogen gas from the volcanoes escaped into space, which still happens now, while other gases accumulated. So we can see here, again, another artist's representation of what they believe the conditions on early Earth were. And as we know from junior science, for chemical reactions to take place, sometimes we need the input of energy of some form. So we can see a couple of different forms of energy in this image, and we'll go through them one at a time. So lightning, obviously electrical discharges from the movement of particles in the atmosphere. So electrical, light and heat energy. We also have impacts from meteorites. So these are objects that move into the Earth's atmosphere from out of space. So they obviously are moving quite quickly. They can cause friction amongst the particles in the atmosphere, which obviously can also increase the amount of heat. Uh, hot springs, so beneath the surface of the water was quite warm, causing the water to heat up. We also have the movement of ocean waves, which is obviously kinetic energy, so we have those molecules in the water constantly swilling around, bumping into one another. And then as we've already mentioned, volcanoes, so lots of heat, sound 
and light energy as a result of a volcanic eruption. Also, some forms of energy that we can't physically see in this image includes what we've already mentioned, so ultraviolet radiation from the sun. So the Earth, uh, obviously, in its position in the solar system, uh, has been where it is since its creation. So the ultraviolet radiation from the sun is able to beat down and heat the surface of the Earth. And lastly, radioactivity in the crust of the Earth. Excuse me. So this is a result of the uh, sort of nuclear reactions that would have taken place during the formation of the solar system and that residual radioactivity that still remains in the crust. So how do we go about forming the first organic molecules? So organic molecules most likely formed in the lower atmosphere at the Earth's surface. Clouds formed from water from meteorites uh, and uh, they became a reflective shield from the sun's penetrating heat. So once the water started to accumulate in the atmosphere, we were starting to form a protective layer. So 500 million years later, this protective layer led to the Earth cooling with temperatures falling below 1,000 degrees Celsius. So you may think, you know, now our temperatures on Earth, the highest recorded temperature is usually in the early 50 degrees Celsius in some deserts. So you can think, just how hot it would have been at this time. So the lower temperatures paired with the release of gas from volcanoes caused immense clouds of water vapour to condense. And as we know, condensation of water results in precipitation in the form of rain. So the rain would have washed any organic molecules that was on the surface of the earth into the lakes and ponds that were already rich in dissolved minerals. This would have created an environment for chemical reactions to take place, which would have been able to possibly produce new organic molecules and compounds. Teamed with this, the, uh, the level of CO2 gradually decreased as it was converted into calcium carbonate in the oceans, so lime water, oh, sorry, limestone, sorry, uh, and then the main gas remaining in the atmosphere was nitrogen. So with the introduction of our protective layer, temperatures began to decrease, carbon dioxide was reducing, so the atmosphere was becoming less dense, uh, and the main gas that was left in the atmosphere was nitrogen. So because the level of carbon dioxide was dropping, we had the um, increase in the amount of oxygen in our atmosphere. So what are these organic molecules that we've been talking about? So we talked about this a little bit in the Patterns in Nature topic, but let's just recap really quickly. So we have proteins, and we know amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. And these proteins are made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, as well as some sulfur atoms. Next, we have carbohydrates, which we know are our sugars, so glucose, sucrose, etc., which provide us with energy. And these are made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. We also have lipids, which make up our fats and oils, and we know that lipids are also involved in the creation of our cell membrane, so the phospholipids. And these are also made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, but obviously arranged in a slightly different way to our carbohydrates. And lastly, we have our nucleic acids, which can include DNA, so deoxyribonucleic acid, and RNA, which is simply ribonucleic acid, which are the blueprints for life. So without these two molecules, we wouldn't have the instructions that are required to create a living organism. And these are made up of subunits known as nucleotides. And these nucleotides contain a sugar, which we've already looked at being made of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, as well as a phosphate group, which is made up of phosphorus and oxygen. And lastly, a nitrogenous base, which obviously is going to contain nitrogen. So what we can see is those substances that are bolded there are the elements that were present in early life or early earth sorry and what we need to look at throughout this first part of this topic is how these elements could have possibly come together to form those larger words in color which are our organic molecules that life on earth needs and that brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching